Okay, today, new lesson. I'm going to be doing a mannequin into a line art stage ready base to take your character design to the next step. Sorry about the R sync focus on the video and the lack of audio. I didn't realize that the audio wasn't recording, so I had to dub in for the first part. Okay, so I'm grabbing my base. I've quickly sketched over the top of the previous uh, lessons uh, mannequin. Um, I've just refined the anatomy and I took it into liquify and I pushed the center mass uh, into more of a taper so it's more of an hourglass figure. Just did that for stylization, uh, stylization reasons. Uh, not because that's like perfect proportions or anything. This is simply just stylized characteristics of this anatomy that I wanted to go for. So I began cleaning up my lineup. So I turn the opacity down for the aforementioned rough sketch layer. Start working on top of that, refining as I go along. So I was fixing the hand up. Sometimes it's good to get a reference of your own hand to figure out the position. Yeah, I just went freehand. So as you notice, I mess up and then I fix it. And then I start working my way through the rest of the anatomy. So I want her to be quite heavy on the top half and skinny towards the bottom half as I want her upper half to seem strong because she's kind of like an assassin so she's got a hold weapon. I'm just making sure to use overlaps and keep my lines thin and accurate while maintaining proportion and form for the anatomy. However this changes based on your shape language and in this case I want the top half to look strong and the bottom half to look skinny. However her hips flare out so she will look like an isosceles triangle which is equal on two sides but not the third so it'll kind of point up very sharply. I'm just going to refine the muscles in the legs, the arms and then I'm going to plot in the shins, knees and feet. This is all with the perspective grid from the previous lessons in mind and grounded in reality due to this perspective. As you can see from the recording I am kind of tapering her shins and calf muscles into a, like a, a sharp point almost like an upside down elongated teardrop or water droplet and this is due to the aforementioned shape language I'm going for in this piece. In this piece I'm going for a top heavy as I've said I'm just reiterating and skinnier down the bottom but I want her thigh to be the big shape, the calf to be the medium shape and the foot to be the small shape. Okay, so I'm going through and I'm refining the hips. I'm kind of making the edges, if you notice, of everything fairly sharp. This is due to the shape language as well. I kind, If she's an assassin, I want to keep in mind that she's going to have sharp edges rather than curved edges. Her lines, however, through throughout. So usually at the vertices is sharp, whereas when there's like transitioning lines, so like the thigh, for instance, I keep that long and smooth and curvilinear. Quick tip, search for your favorite character designers on Instagram and follow their current shape language. Um, right now I'm going to refine the shoulders and the clavicle bones. So they always tilt upwards on the form and then the clavicle also joins the front delt into the trapezius muscle which rolls from the back into the middle of the shoulder and then it joins the scapula in the back and that rolls into the latissimus dorsi which rolls through the front of the body towards the oblique. As you can see from the footage here I am starting to refine the head however this will later change as I am unhappy with the shape. I want it to be a bit larger for the character and I didn't think this fitted what I wanted. However I will talk you through what I'm doing right now. I am blocking in some wedge shapes and I'm showing you that if I were to light the character, that would be where the shadows would go. So I blocked in a kind of sunglasses shape for the sockets of the eyes. I've added in a nose. This character was originally going to be Asian, so I've given her quite like a flat nose and protruding cheekbones. However, as I said before, this wasn't going the way I wanted it to because the perspective was quite difficult. It's an up angle. I need to practice that more. And I suggest that if you struggle with these types of angles yourself, practice them as much as you can. I think... I struggled with this shot due to that reason. Practice this, I would do some boxes in perspective. So I'm refining the neck muscles. That That is one thing I'm fine with. So basically I was just making sure that the trapezius rolls down the back of the head and then you get the sternocleidal mastoid which rolls through the front 
it joins the collarbone. Then I start to block in the sockets for the skull. I'm just trying to make sure that the lips roll around the form of the head rather than just lying flat on it. Here, which means curving the lines around the face. As I said before, I'm quite unhappy with this already, so it's not gonna look great. I'm gonna take this away any moment now. I think the primary reason I was unhappy is because the neck was too long and the head too small. I will talk you through what I'm doing though, so I'm zooming out to make sure that I get to see these problems constantly flipping the canvas. You notice it's back and forth, back and forth, so I can see the problems. And it's at this point I realize I'm not quite happy with the with the head. I think it's not looking how I want it to look. So I think the primary reason I was unhappy is because the neck was too long and the head too small. I just move away from it because it's frustrating me and I start working on some of the other joints of the arm and the overlap for the forearm. Making sure to maintain my shape language which is pointy and curvilinear lines. I've rubbed out the head as you can see because I wasn't happy with it. I've moved the character aside and I've got rid of the underlay drawing for the rough and I'm just going to start working on top. So I'm trying to drop in a cranium right now for a head size I like. I decide, you know what, because I'm struggling with the, uh, the perspective, I'm going to drop in a box following the perspective and it's going to have semi-skull proportions there. It's just got like a chopped off back. I bring it down so it matches the head size and where the neck is. I kind of flatten it off on the bottom so you can kind of see the bottom plane of the box. I now grab a soft brush for my eraser I rub that out and I now work on top, catching in my skull, making sure to use reference as this is a hard pose. So I'm just roughly curving the back of the head there, curving the forehead. I start adding the brow bones and then I've got the the kind of indent for the side of the skull where the, where the cheekbone would join in. I've added the jawbone. I start just rubbing out and refining the side of the face now. So as you can see, I think the thing that I was finding most difficult with this piece is that the, the chin and the jaw kind of merge into one shape with the neck in this perspective because you see the underneath. However, I always got to keep in mind that the muscles of the, of the throat kind of taper in and then flare out to join the jaw. So I'm, we I'm placing in my wedge, which breaks out to the silhouette here for the nose refining the jawline a little bit for the unseen side. So I begin adding in the nostril and then the socket of the eye for the unseen side. This helps to find the silhouette. So I begin refining the back of the head and the top of the head and then I refine the profile view and then I start plotting in the space for the eye. So here I'm placing in the eyeball which is seen from underneath so you get the bottom eyelid would be completely flat as you're looking up at it, you wouldn't see the top form. You'd only see the bottom plane. You see the bottom plane of the top lid, however, which is why it's showing how it is. And then I rounded the eyeball there. Here, I'm following the same principle I told you about before. I'm rounding the lip around the form of the skull rather than just laying it flat on the face. I will, however, go back in and refine that a little bit more in a second. Rounding off the back of the skull here, zoomed out so I can see the problem. I noticed from zooming out, that the front of the head is a bit too tall, so I just rub that out and fix it as I go. Here I add a little bit of eyelids, I refine the eyeball and add a corner for the tear duct. And I just place in a quick line for my forehead and the wing of the nose. I give the nose a bit more of a bump. I decide to go a bit more towards a Caucasian character here. Instead, I'm messing around with the nostril shape here, just trying to find one that I like. I think I found it. I block in a little triangle for underneath the ear so it looks like it's got some ambient occlusion. I drop in some ear shapes and then I zoom out and start refining the edges and vertices of the character's proportions. So in this case I am adding in the front delt and the rear delt with some overlap from the trapezius muscle to give it depth and then the rear delt is curving in front of the tricep muscle as and then I've showed that through the overlap of line weight. Now I begin refining that lip as I mentioned before because I didn't like how it looked. So I'm going to rub that out and move it up a little bit and add a almost like a drop shadow line there to the mouth. That foot was looking very small in the perspective so I've just quickly uh, rubbed that out and put it back in with a perspective in mind. And generally I wouldn't go much further than this for my character. I would generally now, after getting to this stage, which I'd be quite happy with, I think, I'd 
bring down the opacity, I'd start adding clothes, find a hairstyle, reference, and then I would make sure all of this reference leans towards a motif that I like and matches my current shape language. And then I kind of just refine the shapes a little bit more and then I'm going to call it done. <laughs> 